Becky. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys finally the updated homeschool room tour right down to even these cute little jars that I label with my Cricut Maker which I'll show you how I did it in a little bit and how easy it is to use a Cricut Maker to make labels and shirts and all kinds of stuff. But I think this is honestly my favorite part of the room and it's just labels but they're really easy to make and I think it adds a lot to the room. So everything I'm going to show you is what I've been working on honestly for the last two months trying to kind of reclaim my office space. We've been homeschooling, I think, coming on nine years. Um, but before we homeschooled, this was still my office, which it still is on this side of the room. Uh, we started homeschooling and I had to have room in here for two desks and all of the materials that went along with that. And so that's how the room started out. There used to be two desks in here. It took up a big portion of the room. And then over time, my oldest daughter gradually just decided she wanted to do her work either in her room or and in another, another desk that we have upstairs in the bonus room. So she hasn't done school in here for quite a while, but I remember when we started homeschooling, I remember thinking, I'm not gonna let this room be taken over by homeschool stuff, <laughs> but that's exactly what happened. And over time, and as she's gotten older, and as we've really got a lot less and less materials and a lot less things that need to be kind of visually displayed all the time, I really wanted to reclaim my office and make it look as nice and calming as possible. And this room is right off of the kitchen. We have glass French doors right here and then there's the kitchen and so you can see through in here and when there was posters on the wall and then all these bookshelves were open, it just created a lot of visual clutter which I didn't like. Uh, I didn't like it for myself personally and I didn't like it for when people came over. You could see very clearly when you walk in the door all the posters and stuff that was on the wall. So this has really been a progression. Um, of decluttering. I did a lot of decluttering. I actually just posted a video about that a little bit ago, kind of getting rid of stuff. I got rid of so many things that we were just not using. Things that I've bought over the years, books and curriculum and all different things that I thought I would use that I didn't. And that's one reason why I was able to actually put some things in this room that were never in here before, but there is a lot better place for them. So very long-winded intro, but this is our homeschool space slash my office. As you can see, we also have a guinea pig in here. So unfortunately, that does take up quite a bit of the space. If she wasn't there, I would have probably some kind of, you know, shelving unit with some decor in there. But she is, and so that's kind of the way that it works out. And that's why her bases that she's on are kind of spaced apart, so she has enough room for her cage to fit. But I use it as functionally as possible. Her extra bedding and blankets are in here, and this little container down here that came from Ikea holds all of her hay. So that's all of her stuff except for her little jars over here, which are the new addition that I just added because previously her hay basket was here, and then we kept her treats in there. But now that I've cleared all this out and have used it for something else that I'll show you later, I had to have somewhere to keep her hay. So I took the door off of this Alex, it's the Ikea Alex cabinet, took the door off, that fits perfectly in there, uh, but there was nowhere to put her trees any longer. So I thought, why not put them out and make them part of the decor, label them and make them cute. And even the jars, I love that the wood tones up here kind of mimic the coloring on our new flooring. So I'm gonna show you really quickly how I made these. It's super, super simple. Uh, and I think it adds a lot of personality to the room. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open up the Cricut Design Space. It's where you can make pretty much anything you can think of you can make in Cricut Design Space. Super simple for labels. I just type in what I want them to say, choose my font, and to save myself a little bit of extra time, once I've done that with one piece of text, I just duplicate it and then retype whatever I want the label to say. So it's just a little bit of a time saver when you're making labels, especially if you're making a lot of labels at once. with different fonts you can play around with the sizing and it's just a really that's one reason why I started with labels with my Cricut Maker because I figured it was the easiest thing to start with and it is super simple so as you can see I literally got these labels ready to cut in seconds once I did that I just told the machine to go ahead and make it I went ahead and did more pressure just to make sure I get a good nice clean cut and then I cut it out on my Cricut Maker with the light grip mat. It's a little bit easier for me to place the vinyl when I'm using the light grip mat versus the standard. I also chose in this project to use the Cricut 
removable vinyl. That way, if I want to change what her jars say or use them later on down the road for something else, it's gonna be a lot easier to remove removable vinyl than it is permanent vinyl. Now comes the weeding process of pulling off all the excess vinyl that I don't need. It's actually strangely satisfying to do this. I don't know why, but I actually really enjoy that part of the process. done and I made sure I got off every single piece of vinyl that I do not want to transfer I go ahead and stick on the transfer tape that is how you're going to get your vinyl onto whatever you're putting your labels on there is the first label and then now it's time to start placing them on the jars there is something so oddly satisfying about peeling this off I decided I needed to put a little bit of swanky music in here for you guys <laughs> I just love this part so much did the same thing for the other two jars and they're all finished they turned out so cute and like I said because I use the removable vinyl it's gonna be really easy to change up what is in the jars or if I want to use them somewhere in the house later on for something else it's gonna be super simple to peel that off and I went ahead and saved that project that way if I do decide to relabel some of her jars later I've already got the exact same font and everything that I used the first time saved as a project Okay, so that's how those turned out, and that's the only thing of beans besides her that's actually sitting out. So this is her little cabinet here. In here, I just have a lot of overflow office supplies. So I've got markers and ink and things like that, rubber bands. Down here is my paper drawer, so all of my extra post-it notes and index cards, my paper punches, some staples and paper clips. She's very curious wondering what I'm doing uh, down here I have extra pens and pencils and erasers and school supplies and things like that markers down here is my laminator my label maker my three hole punch and then some little office accessories for my file folders and then down here this is the only drawer that's actually got any homeschooling stuff in it used to it was over there and there was like three or four that were taken up with this stuff I decluttered most of it got it all down to this which is like games science materials flashcards all of that stuff so that, that made a huge difference getting rid of four of four or more of those cubbies that had just tons of stuff and condensing it down into one drawer that I have and I can get and and put everything I need in there and then on this side this is the same cabinet that this is just with the door on it these are all um, extra workbooks, things we're not using yet, things that I've used with my oldest that I wanted to save for my youngest, teaching manuals and things like that. So that's just all overflow, teaching instructions and workbooks, and then I have room to grow right here. So that is that side. So previously, these eight cubbies had all homeschool reference books and them in chapter books. And then these eight had all things that I said, like down here we had bean had hay, but then everything else was like learning games, manipulatives, all different types of stuff. All of that has been decluttered, downsized. And so now I have 12 cubbies now that have doors on them that have our photo albums. These used to be in the back of a closet that we made under our stairs that was really, really hard to get to. We never got to look at them. We never really got to enjoy them because they were so inaccessible. Now these eight are full and these four are empty. The doors, close everything off so you're not seeing a bunch of different colored books and things like that that, that creates a lot of visual clutter like i said um, and it also just being in this room makes it a lot more accessible and we're going to be able to enjoy our pictures more now because we actually can get to them that left these four up here at the top which is what i have left of all of our homeschooling materials and i have room to grow which is super important when organizing any space because if you organize to the fullest with everything you've got then you get one more thing you don't have room for it so i have one entire cubby that is empty and then these are all chapter books and then these are all reference books and to divide them up I just took old poly folders cut the folder apart and labeled them so this section is nature space ecosystems 
And then this whole one is animals and insects. That's that entire cabinet. The cute little label jars. The jars came from Amazon. You guys saw me make, make the labels with my Cricut maker. And then I just have a framed Pledge of Allegiance up there just to remind us to say it as part of our daily school because it's super, super important. And uh, the frame came from Hobby Lobby. I've had it for years. It just happens to match the room. I didn't paint it, uh, but it worked out that way. So this is my youngest daughter's desk. And again, got rid of a lot of stuff that she wasn't using. So this side over here is her active curriculum. She's got some reference things here, some little notebooks and her thesaurus and her dictionary. These are her curriculum workbooks. Down here, it's actually pretty empty right now. There are some overflow markers and gel pens back there that they hardly ever use. Up here in the front section is where her marker bags stay. She's got two bags of art markers that she carries around when she does her art, so that's why it's empty right now. But normally, they fit in there perfectly, the door closes, and that is all of her curriculum. And then on this side, she just has her supplies, erasers, pens, and pencils, and things like that. Here we have paper, her little flags, like for marking her books and things. It's just some little notepads and post-it notes and things like that that she likes to keep. This is her art pad drawer. So all of her sketchbooks and, thing, and then she's, things, and then she's got some washi tape in the back. And this is her unfinished project drawer. So it's not very full right now, but we, um, cause we cleaned it out. But this is where like if she's working on something and I don't want it laying all over the house or laying on her desk or thrown in her closet, this is where she puts things that she's not done with that she wants to come back and finish. And then this entire drawer is empty, which is nice. She likes it pointed this way. I personally like it better kind of out a little bit and turned this way. Um, but she really likes to look out the window when she's doing her school. And we have a little bird feeder right there. And we get so many little bird friends that come and visit when we're doing school. And she loves that. So I let her desk face that way. And this little birdhouse is just something that used to be in her room. And we redid her room actually earlier this year. And that was something she wanted to keep. So she put it on her desk. So on this side, it's really similar to the one I just showed you. Except instead of having the four doors in each row down here, we opted for these same bins that came from Ikea. They hold a ton, beads, ribbons, my Cricut heat press, my Cricut laminating, my Cricut vinyl and all my supplies for that. Craft kits, craft supplies, floof, sand, and then paint, stamps, and glitter. And then all of these doors uh, cover craft books and activity kits. So again, before we got these doors, this is all stuff that you would have seen walking in here or sitting at the kitchen table you would have seen all of these books and while they're colorful and all and everything i really did not want them to be able to be seen so the doors are really nice because they close everything off and make it look nice and streamlined and reduces a lot of that visual clutter I cannot show you what's above this cabinet because it is family photos you guys know i don't show the girls but but i have six frames with really chunky white borders that are really pretty and I have them all hung in kind of a grid pattern. So they add a little bit of personalization and color to the room um, and I really love them. So that's something I have on there. And over here in this corner, I wanted to utilize this little bit of space. So I have my, one of my vacuums in here that the charger for it's back there. I have an extra tripod, a roll of paper, another tripod, but this is kind of my little vacuum parking. And it's really important for me to have a vacuum in here because the floors are dark. So it shows dog hair and things like that. But also that little culprit right there drops hay like nobody's business. And so there's usually hay on the ground. Um, so I needed to make sure I had a vacuum in here to make cleaning easier. And so it lives right there and that's the perfect spot for it. Okay, and then coming over here on my side, I'm just gonna go briefly over it because most of this is just personal. It's not really homeschooling related. Up here above the cabinets, I just have these four bins that came from Container Store about 10 or 11 years ago. I'm using that for storage for things that I don't need to reference very often. So old tax documents and check stubs and things like that you need to keep, but you don't need to keep them kind of down in your everyday stuff. So those live up there and that's the perfect place for them. The open shelving here, I just have these two baskets and then a little plant. These are all of my personal books. So my devotional, the, the devotionals that I do with the girls, the one we do as a family, my YouTube planner, like all of my little notebooks that I need accessible. And then this is where I put work as my youngest daughter completes it. Um, I put it there. And then when that's full, I put it in the long-term storage because I keep a lot of their papers for 
just records um, just in case the state ever wants to see them so that's kind of where that goes um, and then over here during school I have a to grade section so the girls know anything that needs to be graded goes here this is for work that I'm like pre uh, prepping for future units things I'm we're gonna be working on soon that we're not ready for yet and then this is for after I grade her work if I have any corrections I need to go over with her I slip it into this section to go over with her and then I just have an extra one those came from Dollar Tree I've had them for a million years um, so that lives there and then this cabinet is really the only other one that is homeschool related these are all of my current teaching manuals um, I have a, a high school reference binder here for things for my oldest like her transcript copies and things like that so that goes in there this I have turned backwards because it has my youngest daughter's name on it, but it's her grading binder. So it's the answer keys to everything we're using so that I have them all in one place and I can grade her work easily just using this one. Uh, and then these are workbooks that I wanted to have accessible that are for extra practice. So if we're doing something in math and she needs extra practice, I have some math workbooks. Or if we're doing something in science and I wanted to give her some extra reading for it, I've got a science workbook. So things that are current grade, current skill level, current topic that I can reference if I wanted to give her extra worksheets or if we're going somewhere and we need to take a workbook with us, I've got those there. So that is it. That is the room in a nutshell. You have seen pretty much everything. I might be talking too fast, but it's really because I'm trying to make this video not take too long. Uh, but there is a lot to show you and I could have gone into even more detail, but I feel like you get the general idea of the room. You get the general sense for how I was kind of able to take it from the various stages that it was and has been over the past eight or nine years to something that I feel like is pretty calming uh, and not something I'm kind of wanting to hide when people come over and like, oh, they can see all the posters or they can see all the books or whatever. It's a lot more calming and peaceful now because of all the door covers and taking things off the walls and really trying to make it more of a part of the house that is decorative that we also happen to use for homeschooling and my office. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure if you did to give it a thumbs up. I will link all of the previous year's homeschool room tours in the description box in case you want to go back and see how it how it looked over the years, various stages, various grades. Also make sure if you are interested in getting a Cricut. I was really intimidated by getting one. I thought they were really gonna be hard to use, but so far I've made so many labels. I've made custom artwork. I've made shirts for both girls. I'm getting ready to make one for myself. Like it's really, once you start working with it and just taking it one step at a time, it, it's really not challenging at all. And there's so many fun things that you can make, so many gifts, things you can sell. So I will link the Cricut Maker in the description box for you guys in case you're interested. Make sure if you like this video, you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.